What are you trying to accomplish when you're taking a supplement? Not all supplements are created equal. Welcome to the Ultra Healthy Now podcast, where your journey to feeling younger, sexier, and more energized begins. Dr. Nicole Srednicki, who specializes in high-performance health, will dive into practical, actionable tips and strategies that can transform your physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Join us as we uncover the secrets to living a healthier, happier life, mind, body, and spirit. Because true health, beauty, and happiness start on the inside. Can supplements hurt your liver? Quote, high use of potentially hepatotoxic botanicals. Is this true? Recently, there's been a spotlight on the potential dangers of botanical supplements like turmeric, ashwagandha, and red rice yeast. But is this true? Are these substances dangerous? Is this misinformation and disinformation? We're going to break apart an article to get the real facts. Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of Ultra Healthy Now, your weekly podcast where we explore the journey to maximize your health. I'm your host, Dr. Nicole Srednicki, founder of Ultra Healthy Human, where we specialize in high-performance health for high-performance people. In a recent article titled, Estimated Exposure to Six Potentially Hepatotoxic Botanicals in U.S. Adults was published. That's pretty alarming. Hepatotoxic means liver damage. So this made me think, which botanicals are they talking about? My head started spinning and... You know, what were the different variables within this study? Who published this study and how was it conducted? Is this misinformation or disinformation? So misinformation refers to false or inaccurate information that is spread regardless of the intent to deceive. People sharing misinformation might believe that it's true and are not necessarily trying to mislead others. Disinformation, on the other hand, is false information that is deliberately spread with the intent to deceive or mislead others. It's often used to manipulate public opinion or obscure the truth. So I dug into this article. Stay tuned to see the end result of this article's breakdown. The six named botanicals in question in this article were turmeric or curcumin, green tea, Garcinia cambogia, black cohosh, red rice yeast, and ashwagandha. These are all very common botanical supplements. Turmeric, specifically used for inflammation, and green tea, also for inflammation and antioxidants. Garcinia is used for weight loss. Black cohosh is used for the symptoms of menopause. Red rice yeast is often used for cholesterol, and ashwagandha for stress. The article cited that the use of these can lead to elevated liver enzymes, liver damage, and acute liver failure, basically some type of liver dysfunction. They called it drug-induced liver injury. Oh my gosh. So this totally freaked me out. So I read on. The article went on to talk about how, talking about all the different types of liver injury from these supplements, but I was still trying to connect the dots. Then I came across a small section. This was the chemical analysis and case reports. It said, chemical analysis of herbal and dietary supplement products associated with confirmed liver toxic effects showed frequent discrepancies between the product labels and the actual ingredients detected. These discrepancies highlight the risks posed by unregulated supplements and products where the real composition can differ from what is advertised. These discrepancies were found through specialized testing, which identified that some products contained undeclared or incorrect ingredients. This can significantly affect the product's quality and potentially introduce harmful ingredients that can lead to liver injury. Note, you should be purchasing your supplements from a company that uses specialized testing. When I chose the lab to manufacture ultra healthy human supplements, I confirmed that they were using something called mass spectrometry. This is an example of that specialized testing. The study emphasizes that standardization of botanical products is challenging because of natural variations in the ingredients due to environmental factors such as soil quality and local growing conditions. So basically, where are these ingredients coming from? 
And then what are the labs that they test for when they are, when companies are looking at the ingredients? Are they looking for heavy metals, different contaminants, bacteria, et cetera? The authors mentioned that supplement products are poorly regulated, meaning that manufacturers are not required to perform human safety studies or verify the exact composition of the products before selling them. This lack of oversight increases the risks of consumers being exposed to harmful or ineffective ingredients that are not accurately represented on the product's label. According to the researchers, these factors contribute to the growing number of liver injury cases associated with supplement use as consumers might unknowingly ingest products that have the potential to cause liver damage. In expanding this, the authors argue that more stringent regulation is needed to ensure that what is listed on the supplement label accurately reflects the contents of the product. This would help protect consumers from adverse effects such as liver injury. And this is caused by the inconsistent product quality. So I'm just going to give you an example. So this is one of the ultra healthy human supplements. And what's important is that you look for things on a label. You'll see my little circles here. It's made in the USA. It is from an FDA registered lab. And it also has GMP certification. So this means good manufacturing practices. So this means that it's gone through some of that extensive testing. This can vary from lab to lab, but these are just some of the labels you can look for. Additionally, product all the products have been tested for nuts, gluten, dairy, um, and they're vegan and egg-free. So different, you know, depending on your intolerances or allergies, you just want a company that's going to be as detailed as possible and as transparent as possible where is this stuff coming from, what lab, Um, all of these factors that this article was kind of pointing out. So I do appreciate this article as it brings some awareness to the supplement world. However, in my opinion, it's very misleading in that it's representing those six ingredients as the actual culprit of liver damage. When it was actually their lack of quality control, contamination, and misrepresentation. The reason this article sparked my interest was that it is so important to understand what I'm providing for my patients. If I'm going to recommend a supplement brand, I want to make sure it's the best. It's going to benefit them. It's something that I would take or my family would take if they needed it. So at Ultra Healthy Human, we do put our supplements through rigorous testing so that we can ensure the highest quality. So we do use some of these ingredients that are listed above because there's actually so many studies that that demonstrate the many health benefits. For example, turmeric or curcumin um, in the phytotherapy research journal, uh, they compared curcumin with conventional anti-inflammatory drugs like ibuprofen and found that curcumin can be equally effective for pain relief in osteoarthritis patients without the adverse effects associated with some of the synthetic medications. So great example of the anti-inflammatory properties in turmeric. Um, In another study, they looked at the antioxidant properties and saw that it can actually neutralize free radicals. In the stem cell research and therapy magazine, they found that curcumin can boost BDNF, which is basically like a type of growth hormone in your brain. And this could actually delay or even reverse brain-related diseases and age-related cognitive decline. In the American Academy, or I'm sorry, in the American Journal of Cardiology, they did a study that showed that curcumin improved the function of the endothelium, which is basically like the lining of all the blood vessels in, in your body, thereby improving cardiovascular health. This can reduce the risk of heart disease and may even help to manage blood pressure. Uh, In the Journal of Affective Disorders, they looked at mood and found that curcumin supplementation can alleviate symptoms of depression by boosting serotonin and dopamine, those happy hormones. Um, There were other studies looking at gut health, joint health, and anti-cancer. An ultra-healthy human turmeric or curcumin is an ingredient in our Ultra Vitality supplement, which is a combination of natural botanicals geared towards inflammation, joint health, and Uh, brain health. 
Inflammation is the foundation of most diseases. So it's important to make um, an anti-inflammatory type supplement a priority in high performance health. Next, I want to point out red rice yeast. So this is a there's a compound in red rice yeast called monocolon K. And this is basically like chemically identical to the active ingredient that's in some of the cholesterol lowering drugs, um, some of those statins that you hear about. And this is actually the red rice yeast has now been studied. In a study published in the Atherosclerosis Journal, they found that red rice yeast significantly reduced LDL or that bad type of cholesterol and total cholesterol in participants, similar to the effects of statins, but without the many side effects like muscle pain and liver enzyme issues. In the American Journal of Cardiology, they published a study that demonstrated that red rice yeast supplementation lowered cardiovascular events like heart attacks and fewer cardiovascular complications compared to placebo. Uh, it Red rice yeast also showed in the scientific reports to lower inflammation levels. And in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology, it found that participants who consumed red rice yeast experienced a reduction in their blood pressure, helping to lower overall risk of heart disease. In liver health, uh, in a liver health study in the Lipids in Health and Disease magazine, they found that red rice yeast reduced fat buildup in the liver. And so it actually improved liver function. There is a multitude of other studies supporting the benefits of red rice yeast. At Ultra Healthy Human, um, there's a product called Ultra Lipid Support Supplement that has a powerful blend of botanicals, including red rice yeast, um, NATO kinase, and some other ingredients focused on heart health, cholesterol, and triglycerides. Further, in the support of supplement use, Ultra Healthy Human has a liver supplement called Ultra Liver Support, and this has in multiple cases been able to actually reduce liver injury. I have a patient with hemochromatosis, which is basically like an iron overload issue where iron stores abnormally in uh, different organs within his body, and this is a genetic mutation. When he first came to me, he already had some liver fibrosis, which is scarring of the liver. And he's been very compliant with his diet, lifestyle, and his ultra liver support. So I recently ordered a follow-up MRI of his liver earlier this year. It actually showed a reduction of his liver fibrosis. So in other words, reduction in the scarring in the tissue in his liver. So regeneration, regenerative effects of this. So why am I telling you all of this? And it's not to boast or make claims, although I find it super exciting and was some of the driving factor for me to start formulating supplements. But I don't want you to be scared of supplements. Rather, I want you to be vigilant when you decide what supplements to purchase. So to answer the above question, are these six botanical supplements leading to liver injury? The answer is yes and no. If they are from a toxic source, then yes. Or if you're taking excessive doses for a long period of time, potentially yes. But if you are getting the pure form, high quality, safety testing, right dose, no, most likely they shouldn't contribute and can actually be very beneficial for you. So in the end, it appears that this article had some form of misinformation. So what are the take-homes today? One, article titles are meant to draw your attention, but may not reflect the truth of the subject. Two, what are you trying to accomplish when you're taking a supplement? Three, what is the quality of the supplement? What is the brand? What are the claims? What safety measures are taken? Not all supplements are created equal. Number four, do you have a guide, meaning a doctor that will test your levels, monitor, and put you on a plan specific to you? Remember, do you want a drawer full of supplements that you never take or a few supplements that, you, that are going to be more suitable for you? So without proper quality checks, products can vary greatly in terms of potency, purity, and contamination, potentially increasing the risk of liver injury. On our next podcast, I'm going to break down how to make the best supplement choices. What questions should you ask yourself before buying a supplement? 
Thank you for tuning in to the Ultra Healthy Now podcast. If this episode sparked your interest in achieving your maximum health potential, I invite you to visit us at ultrahealthynow.com. You can explore our specialty formulated supplements, ask questions, suggest topics for the Ultra Healthy Now podcast, or schedule a consultation. Join us at Ultra Healthy Human, where your health, beauty, and happiness begin from the inside. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Ultra Healthy Now podcast with Dr. Nicole Srednicki. To discover more, visit ultrahealthynow.com and jumpstart your wellness journey with our 21-day detox program, a total body reset, more energy, better focus, and weight reduction. Our carefully formulated high-quality supplements will aid in a new level of wellness. Don't wait. Unleash the ultra-healthy human within you. At Ultra Healthy Human, Eastern and Western modalities are combined with cutting-edge technology to guide personalized health programs to help you tap into the limitless potential of your mind and body. Because true health, beauty, and happiness start from within. Remember to subscribe, like, and share this episode wherever you listen to podcasts. And before we sign off, I want to make it crystal clear that the information presented here is for informational and entertainment purposes only. This episode should not be considered a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. And while we strive to provide accurate and up-to-date information, the content discussed in this podcast is based on general knowledge and research available at the time of recording. Medical knowledge and guidelines can evolve, and what we discussed may not always reflect the most current research or recommendations. If you have specific health concerns or questions, we strongly encourage you to consult with a qualified healthcare professional or a medical specialist who can provide provide personalized advice tailored to your unique circumstances. Every individual's health situation is unique and what works for one person may not be suitable for another. This podcast is a presentation of the Rich Dad Media Network.